some songs have a universal appeal to talk to people of all ages um, in all different countries. Certainly yesterday, a song which was dashed off very quickly by Paul McCartney um, has that appeal. It's very, very simple. Um, it's been covered many times and it's earned um, Paul McCartney £19.7 million pounds in terms of songwriting royalties. So he's done very, very well by that song. There are other songs which appear to talk to us, particularly in times of adversity. One of those songs uh, Father John Hall spoke about a couple of weeks ago, and that's a song which is beloved by Liverpool fans. Uh, it is, of course, You'll Never Walk Alone, taken from the musical called Carousel. And at different points in uh, Britain's recent past, that song appears to have really resonated uh, with the national sentiment. We think it was a song which was recorded immediately after Grenfell. Um, it's a song which has been recorded again by Michael Ball um, and uh, in very recent times as well. And I seem to remember it was a song also after the Hillsborough disaster in the 1980s. Um, that song is inextricably linked with my memory of those events. And it's a great song. It's a very, very simple song. And it starts off with this, it's a little like walking onto an escalator and it builds up gradually. So you start off with... comforting song, very comforting lyrics, and it builds and builds gradually until you get to and on and on it goes. I'm not going to sing all of that song, but I've often wondered that whether or not great songs are rating to be discovered um, like a statue being gradually emerging from a block of stone um, or whether a great song, if you like, is truly created, truly invented by a songwriter. Well, I think they probably are truly created by their songwriters. Um, and one last song that I want us to think about this morning is a very, very famous song called Over the Rainbow, which Harold Arlen wrote uh, for the Wizard of Oz. But it wasn't a song which came easily to him at all, and actually it was under huge pressure um, by the film company uh, to write the song for the scene for Dorothy when she was in Kansas. And he just couldn't, couldn't work out what he was going to do. And one day he was with a friend of his, really feeling the pressure, and he was driving along Sunset uh, Boulevard, and he, he was feeling very queasy, and he has asked his friend to take over driving. And suddenly they stopped outside a pharmacy because he really felt he was going to be sick. And he sort of thought a little bit about how the song might start, but he certainly didn't know how the middle eight was going to go. And then a police car went by at this moment and he just thought... But sometimes our inspiration can come at the strangest of times and in the strangest of places. And yet that song has gone on to be covered over 1,900 times and has earned huge amounts of royalties. Now I'm gonna play this song uh, really just to say, uh, have a lovely half term. And what I think is really important is that we have all uh, now been operating remotely for a long time. And I think that for those of you who are learning online, you have, absolutely excelled in terms of your commitment, in terms of your resolve and your resilience. Um, and what really is important is that you now, when we get, get to the end of this week, that you do take the next two weeks off to spend really uh, quality time with, with, with parents. Um, I know you've spent a lot of time with them already, um, but you have that time away from your screens and away from your lessons. And I want you to really enjoy, perhaps um, take, do, taking part in physical exercise, doing those things you can to be creative, but really to have a lovely time.
Have a lovely half term. Hello and welcome to today's section on competitions and pupil achievements. It's the last week before the half term break. What an incredible half term it has been. You have impressed us hugely with your energy, your enthusiasm, your virtual presence in the lessons that makes them all worthwhile for the teachers, your ongoing hard work and all the things that you do every single day to make us at Wassel very proud of you as our students. Our poetry competition has come to an end and later on in this assembly you'll find out who won, so keep watching. This week, Mr Quartermain has challenged you to share with us a new skill that you have developed over the course of lockdown. It could be anything from baking to origami, it could be meditation, table tennis, it could be that you have finally managed to work out how many bricks make up the entirety of your house, or on the other hand, it could be that you become a world-class expert in Connect Four. Uh, it might be that you discover some more family photographs and you're busily trying to work out who's who in each photo, or it might be that you have taken to writing your first novel and you've begun those opening chapters. Whatever it is, we want to know about it, we want you to share it with us, and we want to be able to share it uh, with others just after the half-term break. A reminder that the following competitions are still ongoing. You've got the Two Minute Film Festival for Mr Newell, but also that it's our Act of Kindness Month, and that's your opportunity to celebrate uh, the people around you who are doing things uh, that help us all to be happier, healthier, in, uh, at a time when it's really easy to start looking inwards. In terms of us celebrating what's going on, here are our excellent remote learners for this week. We have Jack Dickinson in Year 8 for DT, Annabelle Anderton and Maisie Rattray in Year 9 for the quality of the work and their positive attitude uh, during their enrichment business study sessions that are going on, Saffron Bryden and Augustine Liu in Year 10, Ohad Havid Buck in Year 12, and Emily Holliday, who has been nominated by her former tutor in Year 12 as well. The Headmaster's Academic Endeavour Award this week goes to Grace Brindle. Her work in DT over the last few months has been absolutely exceptional. She has put hours and hours into it, and the most recent project she has produced on architecture is something that Mr Hodgett says she should be very proud of, so well done. Poetry competition time, and we've had some superb entries for our poetry competition this week. Thank you for all of the thought-provoking original pieces and performances. Many of the poems address similar themes, and we were so pleased to see so many different approaches, including live performances, mirroring a famous work of other people, uh, a variety of form and style, truly as individual as the people who contributed the poems. You should all be very proud. The two runners-up were Daniel Cahalan and James Woods. Daniel should be commended for his superb adaptation of a famous poem by William Blake. And James's performance of his own creation is impassioned and incredibly well executed. And you will see the performance later in this assembly. The winning entry, however, is that of Jess Watson in Year 12. And I hope I can do it justice in reading it. The new normal. So it's the new normal. That's what they're saying. No school, no work. All done at home, where you're staying. Two metres apart. No meetups with friends. No unnecessary contact, the government recommends. It's the new normal. People starting new hobbies. Now they've got the free time. But most of it's spent wondering if they're next in line. Will loved ones be safe and out of harm's way? All we can do is check in day after day. It's the new normal. People were once sceptical of what technology could do, but now the benefits are many and the hindrances few. Trapped in our boxes with nothing else to do, we gain an appreciation for things old and new. It's the new normal. Loved ones far away, stuck out in foreign countries. No way out for anyone, not for people or disease. 
multinational collaborations as we're looking for a cure. This virus knows no borders. We don't as much anymore. Because it's the new normal. And then there's that hour a day where you can go out and play, where you can walk in the park or out across the fields. It gives you joy and a break from going through the motions, from the routines we must keep so we don't go insane, from our own little world all kept safe away. We can see all the birds and the plants and the trees and the cows are still out and the horses and the sheep. For an hour a day, it's not just a picture through the window. You can feel the rain and the wind and occasionally the sun. You can pretend it's the old normal. But people still cross to the other side of the street and there's still space between us. No contact when we meet. Not quite the old normal. The skeptics are there, bored and shut in. They're starting to wonder, what's the point of this thing? People are shaming and pointing fingers of blame. But we're in this together. We're one and the same. It's the new normal. So we stay in our boxes and hope it's not long. We continue our hobbies and adapt where we can. After all, it's the new normal. I have written my poem about lockdown and I hope you enjoy it. Quarantine, lockdown, school is out, no toilet rolls, wash your hands. Home, Netflix bucks, laughs and jokes, TikTok talent, new hobbies, flour, sugar, eggs, Victoria's sponge. Buongiorno, mi chiamo James. Mum, please can I have another sandwich? And when's exercise time? And why can't I take my football with me? I miss my friends. My cats are stalking me around the house. Cities are empty. No yellow taxis in New York. Paris is as popular as Pompeii. There are even jellyfish in the canals of Venice. Nature is stealing back its home. Zooming into class. This is how we school now. Chatting with Miss Friends. Sir, the password isn't working. When will this all end? Desperation, sleepless nights, praying, death. NHS heroes, healing, caring clapping on our streets. Rainbows and bears in our windows. Get well soon, Michael Rosen. We will defeat this. Grow stronger together. Remember what we have lost and that we are one big family. Thank you. Isn't it great to be alive? Even on this cloudy Monday morning, just listening to the bird life looking at the wonders of creation all of god's glory the grandeur of creation it's important isn't it to take stock of ourselves something we very rarely do we're keen to take stock of other people but to actually take stock of ourselves the things that really matter being still there's a blackbird on that roof there singing away he is one of the beauties of having to stop and be locked down is that we're able to enjoy the life in all its abundance around us when we take stock of ourselves and our own well-being it's important to reflect on our mental health our spiritual well-being many years ago I went away on retreat but I was advised not to take any books 
is we're going to spend four or five days in a monastery just to sit, pray and be still. And I was told not to worry if I fell asleep because that's a sign of well-being, recharging the batteries of absorbing all that's around you and just taking time, quality time out, just to be still. So as we begin this brand new week, why don't you use this opportunity again to reflect on your own health and well-being. Father, we give you thanks for the beauty and grandeur of creation for all that you have made, but most especially for ourselves and for all that you have given to us. May we be wise stewards of these resources and wise stewards of our own time and well-being. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He comes with holy fire his splendor is our own. How awesome is the sight, a radiant King of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. 